He's not known in the city streets. There's nothing about his face or appearance that would draw others to him. He lives as one without a home, migrating from hill to hill. He is as weathered and hard as the stony hills of Judea on which he tends his flock. His sheep know him. They recognize his face, follow his voice, respond to his touch. In the morning, he leads them out to green pastures. In the heat of the day, he rests them beside still waters. And in the evening, he counts them calling each one by name, attending to their wounds with oil and comfort. At night, he lies down in the mouth of the sheepfold, his body becoming the door, the only source of protection against the elements and enemies outside. His eyes are keen, able to scan the horizon by day and penetrate the darkness by night. His ears are sharp, alert to the sound of danger and the individual cry of a wandering sheep. His shoulders are strong, bearing the burden of the young and the weak who can no longer bear the journey. It is to him the angels come. It is to him the message is given, and he responds. Through the little town that knows not his name, from house to house he moves, bearing the burden of love, willing to share it with those who will listen. A savior has been born, a shepherd who will give his life for his sheep, a lamb who will give his life for the shepherds, for the child of the stable is the shepherd of love. Hi friends, and welcome once again to our Wise Heart Family Singers Chapel Hour. This is Jim Leach giving Dad a break, and it's going to be a two-part break for a couple weeks while we take a look at a subject that, I mean, has excited me and sobered me throughout all my life called the gift of the victorious life. So stick with us just for a moment or two and um, tune in as we look at this phenomenal gift that God has for each of his children.
again. So good to have you guys with us today. Throughout the year and really throughout all my life, at many, many points and in many, many seasons, I have been impressed over and over again at just how blessed I really have been throughout my entire life. I mean, it still boggles my mind to realize and even remember how good God has been and how many ways and how much he has done for me. And I bet you money, I only know the tiniest percent of all the, the good that he did. But this week and then next week, I want to talk about living in the victory that God has given us. I think it's one of the most important gifts that we possess and I also think that we forget about it sometimes, or if you're like me, struggle walking it out effectively. And Moses, at the end of his life, had to remind God's people of the same thing. So if you'd like to grab your Bible or read along on the screen, we're going to read in Deuteronomy chapter 20, and we're going to read verses 1 through 4. And Moses, talking to the Israelites, says, When you go to war against your enemies and see horses and chariots and an army greater than yours, do not be afraid of them, because the Lord your God, who brought you up out of Egypt, will be with you. And when you are about to go into battle, the priest shall come forward and address the army 
He'll say, hear, O Israel, today you are going into battle against your enemies. Do not be faint-hearted or afraid. Do not be terrified or give way to panic before them. Why? Verse 4. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you the victory. You see, God is the one who promised us victory, both in heaven, thank you Jesus, but also here on earth, in this life and the next. And God himself is the one who will deliver that victory in our sometimes earthy, mixed up lives. And this leads me to my big idea today. It reads this way, The victorious Christian life is not based on what we do. It's not based on what we do for God. It's based entirely on what Christ has done for us. Now, over the years, I've had the pleasure of seeing the good men the fathers and husbands that my five sons have grown into. But let me be honest, the apples never rolled too far from the trees. Over those same years, I must confess that I was often a little scared by where they were at and just how far they still had to go. Now the truth is that they are mostly far ahead of where I was at at every one of their ages. And I am amazed at what God has done in and with and through our boys. Not that I'm trying to brag. If you want to hear me brag, I'll be glad to tell you my grandkids (laughs) anytime. But we're talking about my sons. And (laughs) frankly, over the years, I have feared for every one of them Because I just didn't know how they were ever going to learn what they needed to learn. And how they were ever going to get to where they all needed to get to in life. Just like I'm pretty sure my mom had to have feared for me. And that reminds me over and over again about this life that God has given me. And can I confess to you all right here and right now that I believe I may have lived the most lost and wandering life of anybody I've ever known. I frankly don't know how God got me through growing up, especially without a dad in one of New York's mid-sized ghettos. I don't know how he got me through college. I was a terrible student. I I had not matured, and, and I didn't have the discipline and but somehow he did and I don't know how he got me through the Marine Corps or my career or in raising our children and I still don't know how he gets me through these years of service and ministry as we are now I can tell you that while I have enjoyed some successes it mostly seemed to me that favor and fortune rain down upon me I mean you know without any reason of my own how somehow God graced me directly out of heaven over and over again with the successes in my life some of these you might relate to Jesus of course gave me life he gave you life He kept me alive when I should have died in the womb. I was born missing one of the arteries in my heart. I should never have lived. I mean, even one day out of the womb. Jesus paid for all my sins and sent his Holy Spirit to watch over and nurture me before I was even born. And yes, God had to send his angels to keep my sorry carcass alive More than once, I can tell you, especially when I took some crazy risks that were just so stupid. And then he sent Aunt Irene, who was the missionary to our family with the gospel, and all of his people all throughout my life to love me and to help me get a clue about his love and about so many other important things. And then... 
He chose to use me. And he did guide me, and he loved me. And he even has said he's proud of me. And I could go on and on, the things God has done for me. None of them to my credit, none of them because of my greatness, all of them because of his great love. So, since I needed all that and more help just to get by, how in the world could I ever hope to end up with a victorious Christian life? Like I said, it certainly wasn't because of anything great I did, that's for sure. It was just because he gave it to me as a gift, which I then haltingly tried to live and walk out by his grace. Solomon repeats Moses' teaching and illustrates this as well in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 31. Solomon writes, the horse is made ready for the day of battle, but victory rests with the Lord. Now, yes, people, we, we will do our best. We will prepare and plan and work to ensure success. But it is always, really, only the Lord that brings the victory, that gives us life that produces the growth and the fruit in us and that accomplishes his good will in us in the end. It is and has never been about how good I have been or could ever be. It has always been simply that the Lord has carried me through to the good place he wanted to bring me and he wanted me to go. So in Christ, friends, we were ordained to conquer our weaknesses, rise above our failures, grow steadily out of the image of Jim and into the very image of Jesus, and then to inherit all of God's good promises. Jesus said, it is the Father's good pleasure to give us his kingdom. And God is determined that we inherit everything reserved for his children. John, the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse 33, says it this way, I have told you these things, Jesus speaking to the disciples, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Friends, this means that a life lived in Christ just cannot fail. He has overcome, and with him, we too are overcomers. Paul says it powerfully in Romans chapter 8. I'm going to read verses 31 through 39, but the whole chapter is power-packed. But starting in verse 31, Paul says, What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? I've always read that. If God is for us, who cares who's against us? He who did not spare his own son, Jesus, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Verse 33, and Paul continues, And who, who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It's God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is also at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Verse 35, Paul continues, And while we're at it, who is ever going to separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, For your sake we face day, death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered, no, 
in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Not because we're great. Not because Jim's some wizard at anything. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm convinced, Paul continues, that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor death, nor anything else in all creation, neither our failures, our divorces, our mistakes, our uh, our unfaithfulness, none of these things will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that's because Jesus paid for every one of those failures on the cross in full. So, my big idea today reads this way. I said it earlier, and I'm going to repeat it now. The victorious Christian life is not based on what we do, what we do for God even. The victorious Christian life is totally based on what Christ has done for us. So my application goes this way, beloved friends. Let's be thankful for all that God has graciously given to us. And let's trust him to complete the good work he started and is determined to finish in us. And then let's commit ourselves to walking out this victorious Christian life in a manner that would please him and show the world while we're at it that there is more in Christ than they could ever, this world could ever offer. And that's what our message next week will be about. Walking out that gift of the victorious life. But for today, I wanted to lay the foundation of what we have, how amazing it is, and how we got it. And then we can build on that foundation the how we can live it as God intended. Amen? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I again stop and just thank you and worship you at your mind-boggling goodness to me and mine and us people. And we are so grateful, but knowing, Lord, our uh, how much we don't deserve it and how, un, uh, un, how weak we are. We just lean on you and into you. And Lord, we thank you for this victory that you have provided 100% and then given to us so generously, so graciously. I thank you, Lord, and we worship you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thanks for joining us. I sure hope I see you. Oh, I can't see you. I sure hope you see me next week. (laughs) God bless. Thank you for joining us today for The Chapel Hour with Reverend Russell Weishart and the Weishart Family Singers. For previous programs, please go to YouTube and search for The Weishart Family Singers channel. If you're a minister, teacher, or student of the Bible and would like to access Reverend Weishart's messages, outlines, and sermon notes, please go to thechapelhour.blogspot.com. And of course, one of the best ways to stay in touch with us is on the Weishart Family Singers Facebook page. We want to thank everyone for finding us, for your encouragement, for subscribing to our channel, and for hitting that little like button. We look forward to seeing you next week on The Chapel Hour.